G'day guys, today on Glenn's Aussie Barbecue, we're gonna be cooking Poposo. Now this recipe comes straight from foodwishes.com. Chef John over there does some awesome stuff. If you've never checked out his channel, have a look. This looks like the perfect recipe for me. I love black pepper and I love beef short ribs. So the best thing about this is, is very, very little prep work involved. So what I'm gonna do first is shoo these flies away and go set the Kamado up. So we're going to be setting up to run around 115 Celsius today. Just going to start my little fire lighter in there now. I've also buried some apple wood and you can see there's some annoyingly small pieces of hickory that's left in the bottom of the bag so I thought I'd chuck it in. Alright that's been burning for several minutes or so. I'm just going to put a chunk right there. Just going to put our divide and conquer rack in now. Our grill grates are in the top position. Going to close the dome, open the bottom vent and the top slider until we hit a so we hit the 150 Fahrenheit mark and then we'll set our vents and we'll go play with our ribs now. So the first thing I'm going to do is apologise for the flies because there's lots of flies. So I've got some salt here, I'm going to generously, generously cover these ribs. So these have been salted all the way around, I'm going to put them aside so the flies don't carry them away. Just let them soak up that salt and then, and then we'll do the next step. So here I have several cloves of crushed garlic, a teaspoon of tomato paste, and a pinch of salt. And what I'm going to do is just put that on those ribs, and I'm going to rub it all over. Ooh, rub it. Now that they've got a nice coating, I'm going to put a heap, heap of black pepper. And I'm going to cover all sides of this with black pepper. This is very coarsely ground. It's basically whole peppercorns, but not. Now, as you can see, that's got a hell of a lot of pepper on it, and that's the point. Hey, you, it's called peposa. What do you What do you expect? It's got no pepper. All right, so now I'm going to pour some red wine in there, around enough to get a nun drunk. No, nah, more than that. Nuns don't drink more than that. Oh yeah, luckily I've got more wine. Just gonna take it up to around there. I'm not gonna really measure this. Just gonna add some rosemary and some bay leaf. Now, this also calls for sage. And two hours ago my wife said, I'm coming home darling and I've got some sage. And she's still not here. So, she is going to be in so much trouble when she gets home because she's ruined my day. So I'll just have to add the sage later. So we're going to put this on the Kamado now. After I add, guess what? Some more pepper. This is ground more than the other pepper was. And I'm going to add some more pepper on top. Oh yes, it's going to look so good. I hope it tastes good. Kamado is right on 115 Celsius, believe it or not, I'm not lying. I'm going to pop that there. So I'm going to come back in an hour and a half and check that out. Hopefully at some point I'll put some sage in there. And uh, yeah, it's time for a beer I guess. So we are an hour and 20 minutes into this cook. The wife came home with some sage around 15 minutes ago. Yeah, she's looking at me sheepishly right now. So we, yeah, sheepish. All right, so now I'm gonna turn these ribs. Let them soak up some more of that rib wine. And I'm gonna do that every half an hour now. I'm gonna keep turning these ribs until they become probe tender. Probe tender. Now this has been going for just over two and a half hours. As you can see, the bones have pulled out while I've been turning, which is fine. I don't know why I just turned that bone then, there's no need for that. So, this is not a traditional barbecue dish. This is not going to be on any kind of competition tour. It's not about that. This is about cooking sensational bloody beef ribs that taste the absolute goods. So, don't worry about that. 
And sure, the sauce doesn't look as good as it did before, but that's okay. Just gonna let that keep going now, and till they're fork tender. And I can tell you right now, they're nowhere near it. Now I might actually uh, take the temp up a little bit. I might take it up to like 125 Celsius, but we'll see. I'm, not, I'm in no hurry. This is uh, work in progress. Oh, this is gonna be good. It better be good. Hope it's good. So I upped the temp to 130 Celsius. The smell coming out of this Kamado is unbelievable. It really is. <laughs> I'm looking forward to hoeing into this later on. Oh, oh my, look at that. I left the bones in there. I just left them in there to, you know, hang out, say hello. But this is, oh, we're getting closer. Oh, that taste. That, oh, red wine and pepper. That tastes awesome. So we're four and a half hours into this cook and they're looking good and they're probing even better. So I'm going to take them off, put them on the cutting board and we'll see what we've ended up with. But right now, I'm pretty bloody happy. So these smell unbelievable. So I'm just gonna cut into that one. So, moment of truth, taste is, you know what? When you're cooking this, you're thinking I'm putting way too much pepper on there, but there's no crusty pepperness at all. Everything's soft. It's a beautiful pepper heat. It's not a spicy heat, it's just that pepper heat, which I love. This is really good. Now I've actually cooked this to put on wraps during the week for lunches, and it is perfect. It's perfect for what I want. That's really nice. This wasn't the exact recipe that was on foodwishes.com. Um, if you want to do it to the T, check it out on um, Chef John's page. But this is beautiful. Everything on the Kamado is better. Doesn't matter what it is. Everything's better. So give this, a, give this a try if you want. If you don't, don't. But um, I'm really enjoying this. this is, oh, that taste is just hanging around in the back of my palate. It's just there, in the front of the palate, all over the palate. Palate's full. Oh, so good. Thanks for watching. I love it.